Thank you, Grace. Chapter 10, lesson number 11, composition of transformations. So what is this all about? Well, in the last lesson, we were looking at the matrix transformations. And what we're going to do in this lesson is we are going to combine some of the transformations. However, since the multiplication of matrices is not commutative, the order in which we multiply matrices is important. So if you're multiplying two numbers together, if you do three times five, you get 15. If you do five times three, so if you reverse the order, you also get 15. So for numbers, it doesn't matter in the order when you're multiplying, but for matrices, it does. If you have matrix A and you multiply it by matrix B, you will get a different result most of the time if you do matrix B times matrix A. So the order is important. From the previous lesson, if transformation A is applied to a point, the result is given by A, the transformation, multiplied by the point matrix. Note that order. However, if we then apply another transformation, let's call it transformation B, well, this pre-multiplies, so it comes before the first result. So you would have B times A times X. So, if you apply more than one transformation to find the resulting matrix, you multiply the transformations together, but you multiply them in reverse order. So you take your second transformation and then you multiply that by the first transformation. Let's have a look at some examples. So example one, find the image of the point AB under reflection in the X axis, followed by reflection in the line Y equals X. So first of all, let's look at reflection in the X axis. We need the matrix associated with that. Just remember, if we have our X and our Y axis, if you, got, uh, if you have some point X, Y, well, if you reflect that in the X axis, it will end up down here. So you will have X and then negative Y. If you have your X and then negative Y, you could write that out as 1X, add one zero y and then with your negative y you could write that as zero x and negative one y if you take just the coefficients so you've got one and then zero zero and negative one well that will give you the matrix that is associated with that so one and zero zero and negative one looking at a reflection in the line y equals x so reflection in the line y equals x, we could just do the same thing. So again, if you've got your x and your y axis, if you've got this line y equals x, well, if you have some point x, y, if you reflect that over, well, instead of x, y, you would have y, x. So if you had the point 5, 3, that would then become 3, 5, if you're reflecting it over. So you know that would become y, x, and if you write that down, well, y, and then x, you could write as 0x, so 0x, add on y, and I'm trying to write with a mouse, which is almost impossible, and then x, you could write as 1x plus 0y. And if you take the coefficients of this, we've well, got 0x add 1y, so you'd have 0 and 1, and then in the bottom, you would have 1x plus 0y, so you would have 1 and then 0. So the matrix would be 0, 1, and then 1, and then 0. Notice that we want to find the image of the point AB under reflection in the x-axis. So that is our first transformation, reflection in the x-axis, followed by reflection in the line y equals x. So this would be our second transformation. However, boom, 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 what we do to find the result, you have to multiply the transformations together in reverse order. So you take the second transformation, this one, the 0, 1, 1, 0, and you multiply it by the first transformation, the 1, 0, 0, negative 1. So let's do that. So we're multiplying these two matrices together. And you know you would also have this point matrix here. We've got the point AB. So if you write that down as a matrix as well. So multiplying, let's multiply the transformation matrices together. So we know this is a two by two matrix. This is a two by two matrix. So the result will be a two by two matrix. If you multiply, if you want to find this entry here, which is in the first row and the first column, you will multiply the first row by the first column. 
So 0 times 1, add 1 times 0, which gives us this 0. If you want to find this entry here, which is in the first row, second column, multiply the first row by the second column. So 0 times 0, add on 1 times negative 1, which gives us a negative 1. For this entry here, well that's in the second row, first column, so multiply the second row by the first column. So 1 times 1, add 0 times 0, which gives us 1. And if you want to find this entry here, second row, second column, multiply the second row, by the second column. So 1 times 0, add on 0 times negative 1, which is just 0. That will give us this matrix 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and we've still to multiply that by the point matrix, which is A, B. And if we do that, well, this here is a 2 by 2 matrix, this here is a 2 by 1 matrix, the numbers in the middle, the 2 and the 2 would be the same, and it would give us a 2 by 1 matrix out. To find this entry here in the first row, first column, multiply the first row, by the first column, so 0 times A, add on negative 1 times B, gives us negative B. And this entry here, which is in the second row in the first column, multiply the second row by the first column. So 1 times A, add 0 times B, which gives us that A. This is the matrix we get out, the negative B and A, which means then that the image of AB is negative B A after these transformations. Example 2, find the matrix associated with the reflection in the y-axis, followed by a clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin. So, first thing we're doing is, well, we'll have a reflection in the y-axis. So, a reflection in the y-axis, what will that look like? Well, once again, when it's a reflection in the y-axis, if you just think about your x and your y-axis, imagine if you've got some point over here with an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. If we reflect that over our y-axis, well, we know our x-coordinate will be the negative of whatever we had. So this point here, if it was 5, 3, you would have negative 5, 3. So we would have negative x and the y well, you're just going up the same height, so y will just stay as it is. If we rewrite each of these in terms of x and y, well, negative x you can write as negative x, add on 0, y. And if you write down y, you could write that as 0, x, add on y. If you take the coefficients of these, well, you can see that you've got a negative 1 and a 0, a 0 and a 1 which means then the matrix associated with reflection in the y-axis will be negative 1, 0, 0, and 1. And that there is our first transformation. Our second transformation, we have a clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin. What are you trying to say, Erin? Brilliant! It is a clockwise rotation, but remember the rotations always have to be anti-clockwise. So you always have to think a clockwise rotation of pi over 2, or 90 degrees, is the same as an anti-clockwise rotation of 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees. If we're wanting to think about that then, so a rotation of 3 pi over 2, well remember, if we are rotating a point around the origin, this is what we would use. So it's cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. Theta in this case will be the 3 pi over 2. That is the anticlockwise rotation. So we will have cos 3 pi over 2 and then negative sine 3 pi over 2, sine 3 pi over 2 and then cos 3 pi over 2 just using this formula which is on the formula sheet. If you work that out, you end up getting, for the top row, 0 and 1, and the bottom row, negative 1 and 0. And that there is the second transformation. We want to find the matrix associated with the reflection in the y-axis, the first transformation, followed by a clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin, so the second transformation. What do you do after that, Naomi? Brilliant! You have to multiply them together, but you have to multiply them together in reverse order! Brilliant! So you'll have the second transformation multiplied by the first transformation. Woo! So the second transformation was this matrix here, the 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and we're multiplying that by the first transformation, negative 1, 0, 0, and 1. If you do that, well, this is a 2 by 2 matrix, this is a 2 by 2 matrix, which means we will get out 
a two by two matrix. To find this entry here in the first row in the first column, multiply the first row by the first column. So zero times negative one, add on one times zero, which gives you the zero. To find this entry here, which is in the first row in the second column, multiply the first row by the second column. So zero times zero, add on one times one, which gives us the one. To find this entry here, which is in the second row in the first column, multiply the second row by the first column. So negative one times negative one, add on zero times zero. Well, negative one times negative one just gives us this one. And for the last entry, this entry here is in the second row in the second column, so you multiply the second row by the second column. So negative one times zero, add on zero times one, which just gives us this zero. Therefore, the matrix associated with a reflection in the y-axis followed by a clockwise rotation of pi over two radians about the origin is just this answer here, zero, one, one, zero. Woo! Example three, write down the two by two matrix A representing a reflection in the x-axis. Part B, write down the two by two matrix B representing an anti-clockwise rotation of 30 degrees about the origin. And part C, hence, show that the image of the point X, Y under the transformation A followed by a transformation B is given by KX plus Y over two, and then X take away KY over two, and then state the value of K. So let's go back to the start. So part A, write down the two by two matrix A representing a reflection in the X axis. So how do we do that? Well, a reflection in the X axis. Again, you can think if you've got your X and your Y axis and you've got some point here. So this point here is gonna have an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. If we reflect it over the X axis, woo, it's going to end up down here. So you know the X value will stay as it is, but the Y value, whatever Y was, it will now be the negative of Y. If you write each of these in terms of X and Y, so X you can write as one X, add on zero Y. And with negative Y, you can write that as zero X, take away one Y. If you take the coefficients, well, you'd have one X and zero Y, so you'd have one and zero. And on the bottom, you'd have zero X, take away one Y, so you'd have zero and negative one. So that is the matrix that's associated with a transformation in the X axis. And that there is our first transformation. Part B, write down the two by two matrix B representing an anti-clockwise rotation of 30 degrees. Just remember the rotations about the origin have to be anti-clockwise, which this one is. Woohoo! So for a rotation of 30 degrees, once again, you are using this matrix here. You would have cos theta, negative sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. Just replace theta with the angle that we have. So we've got 30 degrees, so it means we will have cos 30, negative sine 30 on the bottom, sine 30, cos 30. If you work that out, that gives you, on the top row, you would have root three over two, and then negative a half, and at the bottom, you would have a half, and root three over two. And that there is the second transformation. Part C. Hence, show that the image of the point X, Y under the transformation A followed by transformation B is this, stating the value of K. Just remember, to work out the result, you always have to multiply the transformations together, but do it in reverse order. So we have transformation A followed by transformation B, which means then that transformation B will come first. So transformation B was this one here when we had a rotation of 30 degrees. That is what we got out. So you're going to put that first. The next transformation, well, that's transformation A, and you're just putting that second. So you'd have the one, zero, zero, negative one. And you're multiplying that just by your point matrix, the X, Y. So to do that, if you multiply the transformations together, this is a two by two matrix, this is a two by two matrix, the numbers in the middle would be the same if you wrote out two times two and two times two, and the result, take the numbers on the end, two and two, so you can multiply them together and get a two by two matrix. This is what you would have because if you want to work out this entry here in the first row and the first column, you'd multiply the first row by the first column. So you'd have root three over two times one, add on negative a half times zero, which gives you root three over two. 
to work out this entry here, which is in the first row in the second column, multiply the first row by the second column. So root 3 over 2 times 0, add on negative a half times negative 1, which gives you positive 1 half. If you work out this entry here, which is in the first row, and which is in the second row, and the first column, multiply the second row by the first column. So a half times 1, add on the root 3 over 2 times 0, which just gives you a half. And this entry here, which is in the second row and the second column, multiply the second row by the second column. So a half times 0, add on root 3 over 2 times negative 1, which just gives you negative root 3 over 2. We are once again multiplying that by the point matrix. We have the point x, y as a matrix. That will be x and then y. And if you do that, well, this here is a 2 by 2 matrix. 2 by 2. This here is a 2 by 1 matrix. 2 by 1. And the numbers in the middle will be the same. You will have a 2 and a 2, which means they can be multiplied. The result of matrix, well, you've got a 2 and a 1, so you end up with a 2 by 1 matrix. To find this entry here, which is in the first row and the first column, you'd multiply that first row by the first column. So you'd have root 3 over 2 times x, so root 3 over 2x, and you'd add on a half times y, so add on a half y. For this entry here in the second row in the first column, you multiply the second row by the first column. So a half times x, a half x, add on negative root 3 over 2 times y, which will give you, take away, root 3 over 2y. This means then that you would have the point, if you write that as a point rather than a matrix, you would have the root 3 over 2x add on a half y, well, really, if you're just taking out that half as a common factor, you'd have the root 3x add on y, but you're still halving that, you're dividing that by 2. And on the bottom, you would have a half x take away the root 3 over 2y. Again, take out a half as a common factor, so you end up with a half take away root 3y, and again, you are halving that, so that is how you could write that. We have to show that the image of the point under those transformations is this k x add y over 2, and then x take away ky over 2. Well, that is what we are showing. And the value of k, well, what would that be? Root 3. Brilliant. So the value of k will just be root 3. kx here is root 3x. We've got take away ky, and it's take away root 3y. So the value of k is just root 3. Woo! Example 4, write down the 2 by 2 matrix M1 associated with an anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin and B, write down the matrix M2 associated with the reflection in the x-axis and C, evaluate M1, M2 so find out the matrix M1 times M2 and describe geometrically the effect of the transformation represented by M1, M2 So how do we start this off? Well, we're wanting to write down the 2 by 2 matrix M1 associated with an anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 2. If you have memorized that matrix, perfect, just write that down. If you're not sure, you can always just use this matrix. Here it is on the formula sheet. So we've got an anti-clockwise rotation of pi over 2. It always has to be an anti-clockwise rotation, so we're not changing that pi over 2. And all we're doing is we're replacing theta with pi over 2. So... A rotation of pi over 2 will give us cos. And you can always think about it in terms of degrees, if that makes it easier. So we would just have cos, pi over 2 is 90, so it's cos 90. Take away sine 90, over sine 90, and then cos 90. If you end up working that out, well, cos of 90 just works out to be 0. Sine of 90 is 1, so you'd have negative 1. Sine of 90 again is 1, cos of 90 is 0. So that there will be our matrix associated with the rotation of pi over 2 radians about the origin. Part B, write down the matrix M2 associated with the reflection in the x-axis. So for a reflection in the x-axis... Once again, what you can do is you can think, right, well, if you've got your x and your y axis, if you've got a point with an x coordinate and a y coordinate, if you reflect that in the x axis, so reflect it in the x axis means it will end up down here. So your x value will remain as it is, and your y value will become the negative of whatever y is. So you'd have a negative y. Write down x in terms of x and y, so you can write down x as x add on zero y. And you can write down negative y as 0x take away y. 
If you take just the coefficients, so you'd have 1 and 0, 0 and negative 1, well, you can write that down just as a matrix. So 1 and 0, 0 and negative 1, and that's the matrix associated with a reflection in the x-axis. Part C. Evaluate M1 times M2 and describe geometrically the effect of the transformation represented by M1 times M2. So if we have to evaluate M1, M2, well, first of all, it means multiply those matrices together. Work out M2 times M1. So M2 worked out to be 1, 0, 0, negative 1. And M1 was the 0, negative 1, 1, and then 0. If you work that out, this is a 2 by 2 matrix. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. If you write out 2 times 2 and 2 times 2, the numbers in the middle will be the same. The result, numbers on the end, will be 2 and 2, so we will get out a 2 by 2 matrix. To find this entry here, which is in the first row in the first column, multiply the first row by the first column. So 1 times 0, add on 0 times 1, which gives us 0. To work out this entry in the first row, second column, multiply the first row by the second column. So 1 times negative 1, add on 0 times 0, which gives us a negative 1. For this entry here, which is in the second row in the first column, multiply the second row by the first column. So 0 times 0, add on negative 1 times 1 which gives us negative 1. And for this entry here, which is in the second row and the second column, multiply the second row by the second column. So 0 times negative 1, add on negative 1 times 0, which will give us that 0. What we're wanting to do is evaluate M2 times M1. We have done that and described geometrically the effects of the transformation represented by M2 times M1. Well, to find that out, what we need to do is we need to apply that transformation, M2, M1, to our point X, Y. And to do that, we take our transformation and we multiply it by our point matrix, which will be X, Y. We will get out negative Y and X. Once again, this here is a 2 by 2 matrix, and this matrix here, the point matrix, is a 2 by 1 matrix. Because the numbers in the middle are the same, 2 and 2, we can multiply them together, and we will get out a 2 by 1 matrix. Because we have a 2 by 1 matrix, well, this entry here, which is in the first row and the first column, you multiply the first row by the first column. So 0 times x, add on negative 1 times y, which gives you negative y. For this entry here, which is in the second row in the first column, multiply the second row by the first column. So negative 1 times x, add on 0 times y. It gives us that negative x. Therefore, you can say that the image of x, y, after that transformation, works out to be negative y, negative x. What does that mean graphically? Well, if you imagine your point x, y, if you have to change that, and it will go to, if you're mapping this x, y to negative y, negative x, it will end up down here. What you will hopefully notice is that that is just reflected in this line y equals negative x. So you can say the diagram shows a reflection in the line y equals negative x. So if you came along x and went up y, if you're having to map that to negative y, negative x, well, you will have negative y, and then negative x. And you can see that's just a reflection in this line here. So evaluate M2, M1. We did that and describe geometrically the effects of the transformation. Well, we've done that as well. That is our answer. Try some of these questions in the Unit 3 booklet, page 33. Check your answers as you go. Have fun. Just remember, when you are applying your transformations, you'll have the second transformation multiplied by the first. Best of luck. Enjoy.